Hey, this is Sylvan. I'm bringing you a quick start guide for Dark Souls 2 today. So this guide is um, for beginners or veterans of the game who are going through multiple playthroughs. And what it does is it just gets you a quick start into the game and it takes about 20 minutes to get. I, I wouldn't say overpowered, but pretty damn strong and you'll be able to use the, um, the stuff, the items and weapon you get um, throughout the whole playthrough. So uh, you, this, this one you get the great sword, and you buff up the great sword, um, buff it, buff up your stats, so you're pretty strong for the start of the game, and you can use it throughout the whole game. The great sword will last the whole game, and I've done this a few times. Okay, so I said it takes about 20 minutes, um, but because I sort of like, I'm not doing like a speed run or anything, I sort of get distracted, and sometimes I forget things, and so it takes a bit longer than that. But if, if you were to do it as fast as you can, it would take about 20 minutes. Um, or we could take you under 20 minutes. Probably do it in like 18 or something. So it's really fast and it's um, and it's really efficient. So here I'm going to go backwards and get the, the ring of stone, or stone ring. Um, and you don't actually have to do this because you don't really have that much advantages from the stone ring at this time, but I prefer to get it so that later on I have it. The other thing is um, you can actually do it after you get the great sword because a lot of people find it easier when you do more damage and have more adaptability or whatever. So it's probably a good idea to do that. The, uh, he's actually really easy to beat, even though you may be a new player or or maybe you just don't know how to um, abuse his move set. What you do is you get behind him after he attacks you from the front, and then he tries to sit on you, and then you just stay diagonally behind him so you can move out of the way, and then he tries to sit on you again. And so you just do this until you kill him. You can kill him with fists if you really want to, but the the uh, cleric has the mace, which does the most amount of damage at this point in time because it's strike. So um, if you're having any trouble picking a class, just pick yeah, pick the cleric to start off with because he's um, he seems to do the most amount of damage at the start. And you see, this doesn't really go perfect, but again, it doesn't really matter at all. Um, so just yeah, just keep staying behind him so he tries to sit on you. Uh, so this, what this does is it um, does an extra 30 points in poise damage, uh, which means when you hit an enemy, they're always going to stagger pretty much. Not always, but most of the time they're going to stagger. It got nerfed a bit after the game came out. Okay, um, so here we're going to actually need this torch, so, oh sorry, we've <laughs> got to get the humanity first, I almost forgot about that. Um, so this playthrough, again, is not about doing things as fast as you possibly can. It's about getting a variety of different things and doing them fast. So getting everything that you'll need for your playthrough. So if you're going to die a few times, you get some humanities that you can use. Um, it's going to get some life gems picked up, that kind of thing. Uh, so the torch we're going to need for No Man's Wharf, um, which, again, I'll, I'll tell you about later, but just know for now that we're going to actually need it. It is a necessary item. These are all the tutorials here, so things like the dagger for um, backstabs or whatever, if you, if you want that extra crit damage is in, the, I think, the first door, and then there's binoculars as well. Um, and there's a few little different items. And if you need to learn any of your mechani mechanics, it's a good idea to go through that tutorial. So right now we're just going to Majula. Um, as soon as we get to Majula, on the left there's a Divine Blessing, which we're going to pick up. And um, that heals you to full and removes all status conditions. So it's definitely a very good pickup for a, a newbie. Um, but it does take a long time to drink it. So if you're in a boss fight or something, you want someone to distract the boss or maybe get as far away from the boss as you possibly can before you drink it. Okay, so in Majula, we're not going to get a bonfire yet. We're actually going to get the Estus Flask Shard first. So you go over to the well and you hit the rock and you'll get an Estus Flask Shard. So it gives you another use on your Estus Flask. Um, so if you do make any mistakes, you can easily fix it up. Uh, we're going to get the Titanite Shard as well. So this is going to help us upgrade our Great Sword later. Um, and they're worth 800 souls when you buy them from the store. So it's a, it's a good way, because we're, we're kind of short on souls at the start. So it's a good way to save some st souls by getting this one. <coughs> Um, this merchant doesn't sell anything of value at the moment. Um, he does sell a uh, a tower shield or something. Um, not, not the tower shield, a great shield. Um, it, the tower shield's really easy to get, so you can you should. Um, 
I'm trying to think. Like, if, if you're really good at killing the old Dragon Slayer, um, you might as well just go kill him at the start and pick up the Tower Shield. But if you are having a bit of trouble with him, uh, go use the... With this guide, we'll show you is how to um, how to get the Greatsword, obviously. So th that's actually really good against the Pursuer. So you can go kill the Pursuer and then get the Drang Lake set after and then come back and get the Tower Shield from um, the from killing um, Ornstein. And the most important thing with that is it's 100% it's physical defense. One of the, sh the DLC, no not DLC, the um, pre-order items has really high physical defense as well, so you can use that as well. Okay, so I just talked to um, the Green Maiden or whatever it is, and <clears throat> got the Estus Flask, so I'm just putting the Estus Flask, the Life Gem, and the Homeward Bone on the quick action bar. And then that, we do need the home bo Homeward Bone for later, so you got to make sure you have that on. Um, so we're just going towards um, Hides of, uh, Tower of Flame now. And on the left down here, there's going to be a shield. So if you don't have the pre-order shield, there's the Crimson Palmer um, in the chest on the left here when I get up to it. So this shield actually is really terrible, but it's the best shield you can get straight away. So um, I advise you pick it up if you don't have the pre-order one, which is the one I'm wearing now. Um, yeah. So in this next part, um, once we get to hide this tower of flame, uh, also the broken thief straight sword you can use because you have the ring of stone. Uh, you can use that as your offhand weapon. And you can stun lock pretty much any weapon and any enemy with um, you're using your right R one and your left oh your L one, and just alternating between the two you can stun lock anything. Yeah, so there's a bonfire down here, we get this, we'll rest at it. Don't summon anybody, because summoning people will screw up this run. Um, hopefully you don't get invaded, because that will screw it up even more. Okay, so this guy, not really necessary to kill, but um, gives you 400 souls, and might as well kill him, because you got to kill the next guy. <laughs> the next guy has a Sublime don Bone Dust, which... Um, improves your Estus Flask's healing power, so then you'll have two and they heal for more. Um, and he only spawns once, so you can kill him if you lose too much health doing this or you die, it doesn't really matter that you're next to the bonfire, so you can just go back and rest at it, pick up your soul if you died. Um, the easiest way to beat these guys is pretty much to stay behind them, and then when they're swinging, when they're swinging move behind where they're swinging to. I uh, can't remember what that item is, but you can pick it up, I'm pretty sure it's just a soul or something. Um, and these guys you just need to run past. Do not activate the platforms or this strategy won't work either. Um, you can actually kill the, the Dragon Knight in, or the Dragon Slayer or whatever. Um, dragon Rider, that's it. You can kill the Dragon Rider um, by fighting him properly, but that, again, that just takes too much time. Don't summon the NPC here. Just go through. Um, stand still until he takes seven steps. I usually move a little bit to the right, makes it easier. And then when he steps the seventh step, he'll fall off the edge when he tries to attack you. That time I thought he didn't, and then he, then I looked back and he, he did. Anyway, so what I do is I get I use his soul almost straight away, or whenever I um, get back to use the souls, I use his soul. Um, he doesn't have any good items that you can buy with his boss soul, so there's no point not using it for souls. Um, so now we're just going to go towards No Man's War. So I've activated that bonfire when I need to go back for it. Um, and there is a good armor set on the way to No Man's War, so... <clears throat> um, I'm trying to think. Yeah, so you don't need to kill anything in here. Uh, and on the first level, there's no there's no necessary items you need to get. It's this next part after we go down a bit. So just run past them. Um, they'll roll if you need to. Keep your uh, If you have picked up any items or anything before doing this run, make sure your weight is under 70%, um, and that way you'll fast roll. Uh, under 50 is ideal because you want to be able to um, run fast, uh, you want your stamina to regen faster and you want to jump longer.
Okay, so um, consuming life gems to make sure you preserve your Estus because Estus heal faster and it faster heals to use. Um, so if you keep walking along, you'll get to No Man's, no Man's Wharf, but um, we're just going to take a detour quickly up here to get the Night Set. So the Elite Night Set is available from that merchant um, under the Tight Night Shard. I'm not exactly sure when, but yeah. Okay, so we've got the night set. So I took the ring off to make sure um, I'm as light as possible, and I haven't I haven't really optimized this part, so I kind of don't know the ideal way to um, to wield things. So um, when I'm equipping things, you'll see me just go back and forward between different items and stuff. Basically, I'm just checking the weight and the defense bonuses it gives me. Um, so I'm putting my shield in my right hand because I'm going to have a torch in my left hand soon and at this point I don't need to kill actually any enemies. I d all I need to do is um, just run past and pick up the greatsword. Um, so you can talk to, uh, what's her name, Lucidel. And once you talk to her a few times you can summon her um, for the Lost Sinner. And the Lost Sinner is actually the thing that is going to give you the most trouble unless you get the Tower Shield. So I don't have the Tower Shield or the Pursuer in this guide. I, I don't think at least I might. Um, but um, if you go... yeah I'm pretty sure I don't. If you, if you kill the Pursuer and then you go get the Tower Shield from um, Ornstein Actually, this is important. We'll go through this. Um, dodge the guy on the left, he jumps down. Run all the way up the stairs. Um, you could have already got the um, torch already if you wanted to, but I usually get it here. If you run past, they're actually not up to you to come and hit you. Uh, if you get hit by one of those bombs, you'll explode because it's actually oil they hit you with. Anyway, these guys are scared of torches, and that's why you got to pick it up. Otherwise, these guys are tough to beat without the... Um, the, uh, the great sword. So you can roll through doors when you're opening them, just make it faster. So you've got to run as fast as you possibly can through this part, because if you take too long, they actually just break through the door and kill you, even if you have the torch. Alright, the metal one has the great sword. I don't remember what the wooden one has in it, but it's not really important. Just grab the great sword, and wood bone out. That way you don't die, you've got your great sword, and we're ready to progress and start upgrading everything. Okay, so now. It's time to level up. Um, it's entirely up to you how you choose to level up. Uh, I think I think it's 14 strength and 10 dexterity. You need to wield the great sword two-handed. But if if you're um, newer to the game, you probably want to um, have the 28 strength so you can one-hand it and have um, a shield. I'm pretty sure the tower shield needs like 30 strength or something like that. So the tower shield. Um, the reason I keep talking about it is because it. The Ruined Sentinels are made so much easier easier with the with the Great Shield. And then the Lost Sinner um, is the only boss that I ever had trouble with, because I, I do these on my No Death playthroughs. And the only boss I ever had trouble with is the Lost Sinner and Throne Watcher and Defender. But the Lost Sinner because um, your weapon is too slow when you're two-handing it to, um, and you can't really, oh, and with low adaptability you can't, um, like you can hit him, but then you can't dodge out of the way because your adaptability is too slow, and maybe I'm just not good enough to um, to um, to dodge it properly. So in this, I'm just deciding where to put the attributes and stuff. I haven't really made an optimal way because um, every single playthrough I, I do is different. There's another one where I just do a mage playthrough and I go kill the dragon rider and um, and I uh, just level up. Um, Faith in. Uh, I remember the other one now. You know the the uh, the dark magic one. So sorcery in faith or whatever it is. Um, so, so it's it's entirely up to you. The great sword you do need the the strength and dexterity. So fourteen strength and dexterity. And then I recommend highly getting your um, adaptability up. Uh, I can't remember what it is, but you want to get your agility to at least 95 and then ideally 105. So if you are doing a, a mage build or something, um, you can get it up with uh, 
should probably have looked into this before I started narrating this. Um, the one that gives you more attunement slot, whatever that is. Attunement, yeah. <laughs> so the one that, the one that, um, so attunement. So attunement also gives you agility. So attunement and adaptability. Because those dodge rolls, I guess if you're new to the game, it doesn't matter as much. But if you're a veteran, the dodge rolls are super, super important. So anyway, um, after you get the great sword, keep your weight um, below seventy percent, and then you can fast roll. That's super important to me. Um, if you're using the tower shield, it's not as important to have a fast roll because you can just block. Uh, here's a humanity. Um, if you're new, I advise hitting every single chest once, just to check if they're a mimic, which is a which is a chest with teeth that eats you. Um, I've fallen off this so many times when doing my no death playthroughs, just for no reason. Even though I've like st I've started on it, um, that plank like walking straight, and then I just you know do a right hand turn and fall off the edge because I'm stupid. So this can one shot all the enemies um, in this area. If you hit just with the tip of the blade, it will you'll have to two shot them. Um, this, this is a soul back up the river as well. So um, if you need more souls to level up, you might as well go back. This bonfire is important because if you screw up, if you accidentally died at the high night, that kind of stuff, you might as well just um, like go back to that bonfire rather than the jeweler. As I said, these enemies just die in one hit if you do it properly. If you hit with the center of the blade, it's not the tip. Uh, running attacks I don't really like because they're, they're too slow. Um, even though I just do a, a backstep attack anyway. But yeah, I don't, I don't really like them with this weapon. I think it's much more efficient to just hit two-handed with the great sword on one. Everything else is too slow. Okay, here... Um, if you want the Hide Knight sword, you can just kill the Hide Knight, especially with the Stone Ring, you're going to um, stagger him every single time, so you just need to keep r one him, it'll be really easy. Uh, I don't remember what I do here, but I'm pretty sure I just run through or something. Yeah, so... Just pick up the items. Avoid the archer because he's a pain in the butt. This is what I realized I forgot to put the stone ring on. So a good idea when you're fighting any of these enemies is to just wait out their attacks because they're actually quite weak when they're just swinging at the air. There's an ambush here. You can just dodge roll past or just walk just in range of him to jump past and back step or something. Um, there's another ambush with two enemies on the side here. Um, and as you can see with the greatsword, this is extremely easy. So even the tougher enemies go down in one hit. As I said, just keep your distance while they're swinging it there, just kill them in one hit. There's the buckler, buckler on the left, which increases your... Um, I'm not sure if it increases parry frames, but it definitely changes... Actually, it does, yeah. It increases your parry frames, and it changes the times at which your parry is active. So, um, it's much... Some people say it's easier to parry, but I actually find it... Um, actually, I just find it unique, really. So, talking to her will give you... Um, well, she'll go to Majula. Um, if you spend enough on her, she'll give you a, a ring that increases soul drop, I think. It's either that or item drop. Um, so I just bought the key so I can open up the blacksmith's um, uh, house in Majula, and then that way he can upgrade and repair my items. Um, opening this chest gets you the tiny white soapstone, but you don't you don't need it until um, later on. I mean, sorry, you, you will need it, but um, later on you'll get the, the big white soapstone later on during this level, so you don't even need to worry about it too much. You, you probably won't even use it until much later. Um, so the difference is the tiny one can be used when the boss um, has been defeated in a world. Okay, so we're going back to Majula. 
Um, so the run's pretty much done now. All we need to do is upgrade our weapons and level up a bit. So after this, I would recommend doing the um, the giant boss. Um, I'd also recommend um, talking to the explorer guy so you can get his house key, kill the skeleton. Um, that one's really good. You get a I think you get a Estus flask shard from that one and a soul vessel, something like that. <coughs> so now I'm just leveling up my Estus. Then I'd probably recommend doing the Pursuer, getting Drang Lake set. Um, and then that means it'd be really easy to beat Ornstein. Um, I think I might do a Pursuer guide, that might be a good one. Because uh, some of the newer players might be having trouble with him. He's actually really, really easy to beat um, through parries. <coughs> Yeah, so that's pretty much the guide. Um, took about 20 minutes, and it would be much faster if I wasn't uh, so distracted. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.